welcome everyone on April 10th to the uh, Town of Rochester Select Board meeting. And this agenda has been posted publicly in three places, right? And on the website. And interested parties emailed. All right, so we can move forward with the minutes from the um, March 27th. Um, we had, that was a, um, let's see, where is that? We had two meetings. We had a special town meeting there to talk about the, um, there was a request to authorize cannabis retailers. So we are started the process of warning a uh, public meeting and to put that in the public. So I move to approve those minutes. Seconded. Yeah, all in favor? All right. Okay. And then we have the meetings of the same night for the um, regular select board meeting minutes, and I thought those looked correct to me, so I'd move to approve those. Yep, I second that. All in favor? All right. Okay, thank you. And we've got um, these up here. And we've got the um, March Treasurer's Report, and um, which is including the budget status, balance sheet, revenues report, and related, and I'd, that looked good to me. I'd move to approve that. I'd second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay, and Pat's not here, but we can do that. She's not in on Zoom. She is on Zoom. Oh, she is. Hey, yep. Pat. Yep, she's Is she voting? Is she, un, is she unmuted? She's muted and oh. saying incognito. Oh, oh she is? Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> and then we've got... Um, a notification of uh, limited office hours the week of, of April 18th to 21st. It's going to be 9.30 to 1.30 and then 2.45 to 5, Tuesday through Friday. Is that, is that right? Yep. Okay. So we'll, um, well, thank you. Kind of office for a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. And we have a application for uh, Kausha Market Tobacco Substitute Endorsement License. That's the new owner of the Skip Mart. And that's a product that has been sold there in the past, so I'd, I'd move to uh, approve that. Second it. All in favor? All right. Okay. And then we have also, um, this is um, an agreement between North Star Rubbish Removal and um, the town to... Um, continue on with their fast trash program and the recycling. And that's, um, they're picking up um, trash at a cost of $3 per 13 gallon bag, not to exceed 15 pounds, or $6 for a 33 gallon, not to exceed 30 pounds. I don't know if that's scale out there. I know, I was wondering about that. that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and also the, um, the town of Rochester is agreeing to pay Seventeen hundred eighty-five dollars per month for that service and the recycling, which is the big part of that. So, yeah. And I move to approve that contract. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's the ten. April. Um, we're the uh, adopting of the 2023 um, emergency management plan is Larry um, Pleasant is working on that and I think we'll table this he's not quite ready but it's okay. um, it's close he's he's um, taken to that position um, with enthusiasm so <laughs> yeah for sure it's good yeah awesome so we're tabling that? Yeah, we're going to table that until um, he finishes. He's a, he's a whole kind of up. Yeah, he's, um, there's certain, um, um, there's a fair amount, I reckon, 11 different classes that he's required. To yeah, that's what he said today. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, um, okay, so that. Um, really? Is it, um, yeah, so we'll um, chat with him. He said that's almost ready, so we'll table that for a moment. And then um, this is um, something that's been a lot of conversation over the years, but we are um, proposing uh, um, 
um, changing the ordinance affecting the speed limit on the, a portion of Bethel Mountain Road. And um, this is, would be adopted under the town authority granted by 24 VSA sections 1971 through 76 and other pertinent statutes. And this is to promote public safety. And we were um, talking about matching the town of Bethel's speed limit of 40 miles per hour. That's yeah. correct. Yep. And so this is uh, the beginning of this process. We need to, to warn this and um, have the public meeting about this or just let people have it put in. We just have to warn it. People, we just have to warn it. Mm -hmm. And let it sit for 30 days and then uh, we'll take comments and then we can adopt it. Yep. Okay. So we'll um, let this... Um, be the beginning bake. of that process. Let it bake. Let it bake. Can I ask a question? Yes, that Nancy. When you, you said a portion of Bethel Mountain Road, from where to where? It's from the intersection of the Bethel Mountain and Middle Hollow to the town line. Good. Yeah. It's for it'll be dropped to forty miles. Yeah. Good. To match Bethel yeah. on that section, and we did the study on it last spring in May. And Two Rivers is all thinks it's a great idea and to bring it. And hopefully in, that. In further um, disincentive, disincentivize big trucks from going over mm. that road, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be a, That's a hopeful, that. hopeful effect of that, as well as just generally slowing people down to what extent that Martha works. Yeah. Um, yep. I just have a quick question. Um, you you were talking quickly, and you said something about um, you were the matter would be warned for a public meeting. Did I hear you that right? I or no, the um, that's for the um, um, yeah changing the ordinance for the speed on Bethel Mountain Road. Is basically we have to make that public and 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 let it bake for what sixty days? Thirty, I think. Thirty days. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a public meeting that you're going to have. It's just something that um, you're you're letting the public know this is going to happen, and they right. could come to maybe come to a select board meeting and talk about it if they wanted to or whatever. That's, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank, you. thank you for clarifying that. Doing yeah, it I just. Warn yeah. for the public, okay, and um, sorry, Martha. Could, that's all right. Could oh. come to um, select board meeting to um, ask questions if wanted to, if they wanted to. And so it's going to be it's going to be warned. And after it's first warned, how long before you vote on it? Before the board votes on it? Thirty days. Thirty, 30, 30 days. So days. thirty days after, um, then board will vote, and the board is voting. The board is the one who makes the decision. It's not the public making a, a right. vote. Actually, we, we adopt the policy. Then board will adopt the policy if it will decide to decide whether or not to adopt, to adopt the policy. Uh, it's not policy; it's an ordinance. The uh, change decide whether or not to adopt the the, the uh, new speed limit. Should speed yeah. limit today? Okay. All right, sorry to bother you. Thank you. I just want to make sure I had it correct. Thank you. Do you think it's 60? Mm -hmm. um, Maybe 60. We'll check whether it's 60 or 30. Yeah, yes, Robert. Hey, I think we've talked about this before, probably a few months ago, but um, our town clerk or town manager uh, has been trying to uh, reduce speed limits in Bethel. And she said, you know, Robert, you know, Therese, I'm sure that you and Frank and Patty probably know Therese. But she said it's really odd that the state limits the reduction of speed limits. They'll allow you to increase them. And I've said this before that they, it's, a, it's a big fight to, to reduce a speed limit, even on the Bethel Mountain Road. So uh, you might want to talk with Therese and just say, hey, what, what's going on? Because I think we'd all be uh, appreciative of a slower speed limit up there. Yeah, we yeah. we've talked to all the people involved. Two Rivers has handled this, and we've had conversations with Rita Cito and Chris Bump on the speed limit, and they're all think it's a great idea. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, they we, might think crossed, it's a great idea. We've but crossed all the all the places we need to cross, and and this is what we're we're going forward with. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt. 
but uh, as you did to me, uh, I'm just hoping that you've crossed all the T's because I talked to Mr. Uh, whatever his name is, this, the last name you mentioned uh, a while ago about this. So there might be a statute that might catch everybody by surprise. That's all. That's all. Yep. Yeah, we've run that net by him. So we're, yeah, that's why we're um, announcing it now. So as uh, the public is, you can't just do it overnight. And it is a process. So that's what we're starting tonight after lots of discussion over the years. So, but no, thanks for the heads up. Um, okay. Um, anybody else on Zoom have anything to say no. about their their um, checking their speedometers? <laughs> yeah. We have um, another application from the Huntington House for their um, first class hotel license, and so I would um, um, that is I suppose that's for their um, their servings. Yeah. I'd uh, move to approve. Second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. And we have um, also there, again, from the Huntington House for the outside consumption permit, which is the second half of that first permit. I'd move to approve that. Is there, there a time limit on is that? Is there a time on, on that? The, on that. Oh. That's the only thing. I think we have to follow what, what is it, 10 o'clock, I think, is what the ordinance for village yeah, outside. I can go in and, um, before I approve it, I can make that comment. Yeah, add that comment to it. That the, um, yeah, I think there's a right, uh, isn't there an ordinance that we have for noise in the village yeah. at 10 o'clock, I yeah. think, is yeah. it cut off? Hey, dude, can I ask you a question? Sure, Robert. What defines a class A or class one hotel or restaurant? What what did you guys just vote on? Because I don't think any of us really, I don't know what that means. Pardon? Department of Liquor License. It's the Department of Liquor License does the um the classifications. I think there's um it's whether they're just serving beer and wine or whether they're serving hard spirits also. Which they well, they've do. been serving hard spirits for right, years. Right, so they have to um, renew the license um, periodically. Oh, so it's, yeah. it's a renewal, not an approval. It's, it's, right, it's, a, it's an approval of a renewal, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So I'd move to approve that with um, adding the conditions of the, the mm -hmm. noise limit in town. Okay, all in favor? Uh, seconded that. that. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> we'll, get we got it. It. we'll get it together here after a minute, won't we? We, had, um, <laughs> um, we need Pat here to keep us in line. <laughs> yeah, we had a, um, a last couple appointments for um, the one for the Tri-Valley Transit rep, and I believe you talked to um, Tim Crowley, and he's willing to continue on in that, so I'd move to appoint him to as the... The rep for the Tri Valley Transit. I second that. All in favor? Uh, All right. I don't know if we have to move we'll on. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if we have to. <laughs> and um, we're do. going to verify um, that Robert Mayer would like to stay on as a member of the Budget and Finance Committee, and he is willing to do that. So I'd move to appoint him. Second that. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have a, um, okay, let's do those guys. Service. Yeah, the um, special use permit for the um, West Hill Bridge project, which is moving forward. It's the, um, this is for the Forest Service to use the campsite as a staging area for West Hill. That's what you're approving. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'd move to approve that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chris Matrick turns yellow. After that, um, all right, now we have um, another form to execute here that would 
um, certify that we are participating in the National Opioid Settlement, and this is due April 18th, so we're getting that. It's not clear exactly um, what... So there's like five companies, I think they're listed there, that, yeah. um, and we're, um, we're there for one of them, and they just need a signature to continue the process for the, the state of Vermont. The process for the state of Vermont, yeah. right. Right. So what, like a class, a class, a class action, action, yeah, yeah. against well, so, um, so. Um, Tiva, Allegra, and CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart, um, and we may end up with some <laughs> financial <laughs> kickback from this, but it's more um, um, expressing the support for um, right. continued um, accountability for in the situations like this. So I'd, I'd move to. Um, to sign you don't that. need to yeah, because that's due on um, the 18th. The 18th, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, all in favor? Yep. yep. Second. Uh, yep. Okay, we got it. All right. Um, Do we even have to approve that? I thought we already. No, I think we just brought it through to um, just to sign it. It's on the back page. Yeah. Sorry, the whole thing fell off. We already yeah, approved sorry. going for it, didn't we? Yeah, so yeah, it's just a, a matter of. This is the continuing process right. to make That's sure we're I mean. still in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the LCT reached out to a lot of the towns to bolster the, the class action, so right. more or less. As you can tell outside, it's, it's starting to feel like spring, so mm -hmm. we've got a park use application for the library summer reading program on Fridays from um, 526 from 10 to 6 through 10 to 6 from 3 to 5 p.m. And um, that went pretty well. Did you have good participation last year in that Yeah, time? I think it was good. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people appreciated it. Yeah. yeah. Hence, you're applying to do it again. So I right. move to uh, move to approve that. <laughs> yes, second it. Then all in favor? All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> and we also have. Park use application for the library Earth Day program on 422 from 9 to 11. And um, wasn't it just like the 50th anniversary of Earth Day last year or something like that? Anyway, I'd move to approve that. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Um, And um, Tony, um, got any more any reports from the library? That was interesting. Were you at the um, the presentation at Pierce Hall? This no, morning? I was not. You Unfortunately, not. I didn't know about it until late yeah. afternoon. Yeah, Jeanette Jeanette was there, and I saw her chatting up the woman. It sounds like um, if you fill out enough paperwork, there may be more support for. The work that needs to be done on the library. I think leaky roofs in libraries is a is a hot um, trigger for support. Probably true. <laughs> yeah. And much needed paint. And much needed paint. Yeah. <laughs> and they got a first hand look at it by looking out the windows. Looking today. out the windows. Yeah, <laughs> it does need it. Yeah. But um, yeah. this um, Jeff was there and he's been doing a lot of uh, work with them. But any other reports from? The library? No, there's a lot in the paper about things going on, but uh, yeah. I, we have a trustees meeting tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 at the library. Thank you. Um, the highways are 
slowly drying up. Yeah, John's been busy getting things cleaned up. The, they've stayed pretty good. He wanted to get into doing some scraping on them, but he didn't want to scrape too deep because he's yeah, worried. He, off. Yeah, didn't. Or he worried about it a little bit. They, he picked up a new plow because of the one they broke this winter. And um, we met with uh, Rita Cito, um, us, uh, the town clerk, and Kristen and myself. And we went through some grant stuff that we did and finalized a class two paving grant that we're mm -hmm. sending into for resurfacing some of the mountain road there. And we'll see how that comes out. Um, we're like seventh, sixth or seventh in line for on the highway uh, class two side of it. So if we may be able to get some funds, but we'll have to weigh that issue of whether or not we can get enough money to do what to we want to do. Yeah. Oh, and we might be better off just staying where we are and wait until the following year to put the project forward yeah. so we get more, we can get more funding and yeah. not lose our place in line. So yeah. we'll make that decision when we figure out what the grant, how we, how we come yeah. out. So, and I don't know, maybe Kristen has something else, but. No, I don't have grant updates this week. It's been a yeah. little on the down low. The, um, so I alluded to the uh, meeting um, we were at this um, afternoon um, separately. It wasn't a, a Warren Select Board meeting. We were there gathering information from members of the state government from 10 different departments, I think, um, talking about um, the um, applications that are out there for helping to spend the ARPA windfall money that the state <coughs> has got. And um, Robert Mayer, um, he didn't bring it up at the meeting, but he brought it up to me afterwards that um, it wouldn't necessarily be a town project, but something we could bring up with the state is um, the two bridges on Route 100 on either end of the town, which are significantly undersized, like the bridge that took out the Frock property. Um, and that bridge is still there and it's, um, filled in quite a bit of gravel underneath that bridge. I know that the state has once or twice tried to go in and remove some of the gravel from under both of those bridges. But if they're looking for ways to spend their their money in um, ways that are, are climate related and infrastructure related, we should probably um, throw that bone to them. You know? Yep. And uh, I also spoke with them about more funding for uh, the West Hill job coming mm -hmm. up. Then we might be able to hone in on something there. Yeah. Okay. But it'll be later on that we need to research. I'll need to research that a little more. Yeah. Uh, that was my takeaway from that, that one meeting. I, I can bring them. that up no. yeah. with them too, you yeah, know, yeah. about those two bridges. Yeah, because if they're looking for ways to spend this money before, what, 2026, we're going to have to, that would be a good one. <clears throat> also present there was um, Jeff, our energy coordinator. Is he zooming in today? No, yeah, no. that was enough meeting for the day for him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't blame him. No, but he, um, <laughs> he was taking lots of notes, so I'm sure we'll hear from him. And... Um, the um, old business, the the um, name change on the road, have we had any contact with that other Nothing. property owner yet? I wrote again and mailed a letter and haven't heard anything. No, okay, so that's, that's on hold still. And that is um, everything we had on the agenda. Do we have any other um, business that anyone wants to bring up? So I, I have a couple of oh. questions. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry, did someone say something? I said yes. No, before you said yes. Uh, no. Okay, nope. we'll continue. I, I just have a quick question for everyone present. And we don't have to, you don't have to answer it tonight. But looking through the, uh, uh, the list of things that you've discussed, uh, especially Robert Mayer's bridge down there, the hydraulic pressure hasn't changed 
since Irene. So that, that bridge will be gone uh, probably in the next 10 years, maybe. But it's all pretty much about money. So my question to everyone is, does anyone in the room know the exact percentage of property taxes we pay for education town by town in, in the White River Supervisory Union? Again, no one has to answer. You can just think about it. The other thing I wanted to bring up, I, I've been, I sent this email to both Frank and you and Patty regarding the town park. And, you know, I just drive into town and people are saying, when did Christmas end, Robert? And I said, I don't know, why are you asking? And they said, well, there's still a Christmas tree in the gazebo and it's, April, it's Easter. I said, I have nothing to do with Christmas trees. But it brought up a bigger conversation with the boundaries of the park, the ownership with abutting properties, and who has jurisdiction over whether the library can uh, use the, uh, the town park or whether it's some group that wants, or a family wants to have a family celebration. How, how, how does one go about um, addressing the town to get approval? Yeah, is, it the, is, it, uh, is it the select board? Is it the parks? Yeah, what board or what person? You just witnessed two of those transactions happen tonight when the library there we have a application for the use of the town park that comes before the select board so whether it's the library or I believe we fill one out for the farmers market and the harvest there we've had a few people want to get married on the gazebo so there is a there is a, a process in place for for that well the question is who has the discretion to request the removal of a Christmas tree that some wedding party might want to use the gazebo for the bride and groom? How do we go about that? Like, um, who do we go to? Um, the Green Up Day is coming up pretty soon, I think. Yeah. Oh, so one has to wait till Green Up Day to remove a Christmas tree from the taxpayer's land. It's, um, it's a it's a tree now. I think all the decorations have been removed from that, so it's actually just a tree on the stand. And you could, you know, you could. Some people could call it a Christmas tree. Other <laughs> people could call it a pagan temple for the the, the forest. But so um, if one removed the tree, it's if going one away. if no one removed the tree, and then did their celebration, what then would happen? They, they clean up their room. mess and go home. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's not a not that big of a deal. There's no um. I mean, if you want want to take that tree home with you, you're welcome to. <laughs> no, I don't want the tree. But the library has to get permission to have a reading. And how about if they want to have the reading uh, this week, this past weekend, and no one wants to touch the tree, and that's where they wanted the reading to be. <clears throat> They'd have to work around uh, at yeah, this point. Yeah, I don't think you need, you don't need a, a permit to remove the tree. I don't think that's uh, the issue. It's um, it's it, it it will it will go away. Um, there we're very close. In fact, Frank, I saw you volunteering your time to clean up a bunch of the branches that had fallen on the park. So yeah. it's it's um it's you know my my Christmas tree is still frozen in the snow behind my house so I just I, threw mine over the bank too yeah but um it, it'll 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 go away well it's just uh, it's just a question that uh, people are just saying well are, can we move the tree so my brother can talk and give a uh, part of a ceremony to a wedding and I said I don't think you want to touch that tree yeah uh, did you think Martha had a problem with that tree I was only going to mention that when I, that I talked to Nancy Woolley about this recently, and she, I believe I'm, I'm correct, I think Nancy's there, she will she can confirm if I'm correct, that the reason why the tree was still there was they were waiting till the town crew was cleaning up stuff and, and could take the tree with them, you know. Um, that, that's generally how it... Because that's how it usually happens, you know, and how it usually happens around Green Up Day. Yeah. Well, again, Martha, thank you. Uh, maybe we all have to wait to green up day to remove a tree uh, celebrating Christmas. It w I'm just speaking for those that re asked me to, and I don't know why they ask me. Sadly, they don't want to because they don't want to be exposed 
to the town for taking your tree down. I mean, it's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. Well, it's um. It's in the works. If that's the uh, <laughs> the biggest problem we have facing us right now, that's we're pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, thank you for bringing it up. Well, here. June, it's it's a symbol. It's not just uh, you're too busy with everything else. Uh, Frank and I can remove the tree and share all the parts and pieces with anyone that loves it. It, it, it's it's a symbol for people coming through town saying, you know, it, it's bigger than just how busy you guys are. Robert, it's usually done by now, but due to the rough spring that everybody had, and we had snow on the park till about a week and a half ago, and you couldn't even get on it, and you can't drive on it yet because you don't want to put any ruts, although it is drying out really quickly. And, and that's really all it is. And the tree is put on the park by, by volunteers. And to say to a volunteer that, hey, you got to get your tree off the park is not really the way I want to go. I'd rather have somebody when they have the time, they put it up and they can, they'll put it, take it down when they have their time. So I, I'm not going to hassle somebody about removing a tree off the park that they volunteer their time to put up that makes the park look absolutely great during the winter. And then when it comes time, this spring was a little different than most springs. So, you know, we had a little longer session there and usually the tree is gone by now, but it hasn't happened, but it, it's scheduled to be removed soon. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Frank, I'm not worried. I just think it's, uh, it's just a situation. By the way, I, I don't think it would take a pickup truck to back on. To, I think a couple of boys can remove the tree and hang something festive for the new arrival of our temperature. I mean, yeah. we get it, Robert. Thank you. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any um, comments for the tonight? Then I'd um, move to adjourn and thank you all for, for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night.